Welcome to Exclusive on Tablet TV with my very special guest today. Famous songwriter, guitarist, musician and a member of Bon Jovi Band. Felix, welcome. What's up, man? <laughs> welcome to Slovakia. I think this is your first time here in Bratislava. I believe so, yes. What have brought you here to this part of Europe? You. Me? Yeah, you I mean you look like Clark Kent, but you need a shade. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm here to, I mean, uh, uh, we're uh, just uh, talking about the drills and traveling around and uh, ended up here. So uh, here I am. Here I am. This is me. <laughs> this is me. I'm ready to rock all the time. I'm reading it all the time. I'm always ready to rock. Of course, we will talk about the drills, your yes. band, but uh, as I have already mentioned, you are a member of a Bon Jovi band. I know, crazy, right? <laughs> like, how did that happen? <laughs> this is my question. How it all happened? I don't know. I just, I'm, here I am. It happened in 2011? Correct 2000, me if I'm wrong. 2011 was, uh, was the first time I actually filled in. So I got the call to prepare to possibly fill in if needed. And then I got the call that was, hey, can you can rehearse in New York for two days and in two weeks and then we'll put you on hold for May. And then it ended up being playing 13 shows in May. And then Richie came back. So then two years went by and then in 2013 I was in the market and I got a call saying hey we need you in Calgary Canada tonight so um, it just you know to make it short uh, I didn't make it to Calgary in time to do that show but the next day we were in Edmonton and I got a nice lengthy sound check and John was like okay what do you need what songs do you need to play and then we went through four or five songs and then I ate something and then I was on stage in front of 20,000 people so that's kind of it kind of went like that but we always thought that Richie was coming back so 2011 would repeat but he didn't and so I ended up doing 90 shows and then in 2014 he officially left and then 2016 is when John was like I think I'm gonna put you on the album cover and the videos could you please uh, describe your feelings because never happened to me something like this before i feel like it hasn't happened I to me i never a call from bon jovi listen you want to play with me oh first of all when bon jovi calls you and you're in a trader joe's in in california were you nervous you're, you're happy like, or what you're kind of like hello hey it's it's john 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 bon jovi i'm like hey john bon jovi calling <laughs> you're, you're kind of like that um i kind of i don't think there was time to be nervous I kind of felt the stress of having to learn this vast body of work and be on stage like overnight to play it and perform it. Uh, my, my saving, my, what saved my life was the teleprompter because I, I could memorize all the guitar parts because there's so much and then but I could read the lyrics while we were playing <laughs> to sing. So that kind of saved my life actually. Uh, but this is not your the only famous corporation. Could yeah. you please tell us more about your corporations? Well, I, I mean, uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, obviously I wanted my band, I w moved there to make my band, the band that I was in at the time, famous, and uh, the dream that every musician has, right? But I ended up, because I was so, uh, um, I, I was gonna say, because I'm so amazing on guitar, <laughs> because, because, I've had that uh, the ability on guitar to not only be perform and record uh, I have a great ear so I ended up getting a lot of sessions and then I'd go do a session with one producer and he was like well man this guy's really good we should use him for more so I ended up being you know playing with on, on in 99 20 years ago Methods of Mayhem with Tommy Lee and then that led to Rob Zombie, and then Rob Zombie le led to Alice Cooper, and then another channel opened over here where it was American Idol artists, which were like Kelly Clarkson and Daughtry, and uh, and then another avenue where it was Avril Lavigne. So all these producers started, you know, became like the first call of all these guys. So that kept me busy, and, and led to working with heroes. Like I mean, I. I I was a Motley Crue fan, so working with Tommy Lee was amazing. I loved Rob Zombie, so working with him was amazing. 
I was a huge fan of Chris Cornell, so when I was in the studio with him, I, it was almost like dream come true every time I went into the studio. So, but again, it's it's all about you know um, delivering, right? Like when I played with Tommy Lee in the studio, I was painting the garage of the producer. So when they needed a guitar player, he's like, "Hey, can you come and play?" I'm like, "Sure." And then, but if I would have picked up the guitar and not delivered, then I would have went back to painting, <laughs> right? But because uh, because of my ability and my attitude and people liked having me around, I just, I got gig after gig after gig. Can you even tell me which corporation was the most difficult for you? I don't know if I, a difficult is the right word. I think, um, I think knowing your job, knowing what you're, what's, what is expected of you. Because I, if I walk in and I hear a song, I kind of like to know my instincts are really good at taking the song to another level as a guitar player. Or maybe I'll change my question, which uh, corporation you appreciate the most? Well, I was a huge fan of Chris Cornell, so that was really amazing being in the studio with him. And I've been saying all day, like, I feel like uh, I, 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 I try to be so professional in the studio that I, I never, I'm, I'm not selfie guy. Like, hey man, can we get a selfie while we're here working? I, I'm not that guy, but I regret not getting a photo with Chris because he's not with us anymore. So it's kind of sad in that way. Years ago, you decided to set your own band, The Drills. Yeah. What was the reason that you, you wanted to have something just only yours? Well, that is a good question because I did have other bands with my, um, I had a partner that was my, now she's my ex-wife, but we, we, were, we had bands together in LA and some of them did really well. And some of us, some, one band even in toured in the UK and in Germany and stuff. And basically, you always have that part of you that wants to have your project, you know? And then the drills was because I wanted to even get away from her. <laughs> I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to write my lyrics. I wanted to write my music. And I wanted it to totally uh, deliver what I saw as an art, as a fan of music. You know, I'm still a fan of music. I still go to concerts and what I project on stage is what I want to see as a fan. So the music of the drills was basically all my influences and all my, my tongue in cheek lyrics and my, my stories. And that's where that came from. I've heard that you're planning a tour here in Europe. That's right. <laughs> uh, March 2020, we're going to hit Europe and the UK and I'm really excited. What's going to be about? About new music, I think? Yes. Yeah, well, we have, uh, we put out uh, Stupid Good Lookings Volume 1 in May, and we only had a chance to do four shows before I went on tour with Bon Jovi. So, Volume 2 is going to be done correctly, where we're planning on releasing that uh, in February, and then going on the road in March. So that's going to be a, a better supportive role for that volume. You mentioned uh, John Bon Jovi. Why don't you bring him here to Slovakia? Well, yeah, I'll call him right now. Um, it's you know it's one of those things. It's it's when when it's a band like Bon Jovi and it's such a, a huge production. If we don't hit a market, it's not because the band doesn't want to. There's usually something political or something econ economically that's not in in the plan. Phil, let's talk about your new music video. Man, I'm looking at your hair, it's like perfect. Perfect? You like it? It's perfect. I like your more. You, do you? <laughs> yeah. This took a little longer. <laughs> but you have to take <laughs> care about it. So what about your new music video? Tell, tell us something more about it. Um, again, it's, it's uh, why I started the drill, so I could have a voice, you know? And, I'm, I'm, and to me, uh, it's more, I feel lucky and blessed that I get to do both. You know, I have the mega band where I'm kind of in the back seat and let John do the driving. And then when I have the drills, it's me telling the stories and delivering the lyric and selling the music. And I feel like having, being able to do both is an incredible opportunity. Not everybody gets to do that. Uh, and it's so different because, you know, when I do the, the Bon Jovi thing, you're you're traveling in, in a jet, 
and you're playing stadiums and arenas. And then when I do the drills, I'm in a van and playing in front of 200 people. <laughs> According to what uh, you just said, you seem to be a very busy musician. Do you even have a time that is called free time? Yeah, that's my free time. <clears throat> my free time is uh, with the family, you know, because that's the one thing I miss when I travel. I miss my wife and my kids and my kids are small. My, my son is just turned six and my daughter is three and a half. And, and uh, when I'm home, I'm daddy. I mean, I don't even play guitar for weeks after I get home, so I, I've actually become a worse guitar player since I became a dad. Do they want you to play? Um, sometimes. <clears throat> sometimes my son, like, he has a little junior flying V, and he'll pick it up, and, Daddy, I want to plug in! And I'm like, all right, and he saw me do a pick, pick slide one time, and so he's, like, play, strumming his flying V, going, Arr! and that kind of thing. So. He loves it. He loves singing. My daughter loves singing. They both love to dance, so they have the music in them. Um, and we just moved into a new in, into a new place, and we have a piano in the in the living room. And my son literally sits at the piano, and he just and I don't show him anything. I don't give him any guidance, but he's picking out intervals and he's creating melodies. So there's something very natural happening, and I'd hate to step in and give it guidance because on his own he's creating something amazing you know phil we were talking about uh, your tour that's yeah. going to be in europe what do you think about european people uh, do they like rock music more for example in comparison with americans i don't know if it's more i think they or it's the same well i'm gonna say that the rock audience is all still all over the world because I have friends that play in heavy bands and they play arenas. It's everywhere. And I will say that I feel like the European audience has expresses themselves a lot more. I think, I don't know if it's more passion, but I love playing Europe because they, they just, they, they seem to get into it more than Americans. This isn't gonna play in America, is it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we hope so. Okay. Uh, is there some dream that you would like to achieve one day? Wow. You're really getting in there. <laughs> um, I just hope I, I can reach a, a larger audience with the drills. Um, I like being underground, but I, it'd be nice to, you know, because I'm, I'm one of of the old school, I don't care how many people in the audience, I give, uh, I give it 100%. So like even in May, before I went to Russia and played in front of 60,000 people, we did four drill shows and one of them, I don't know if it was the marketing, I don't know if it was la lack of promotion, there was 30 people in the audience. And I drove there <laughs> and loaded my own gear and got on stage, because I love it, right? So I'm playing in front of 30 people, but I pretend that it's 30,000, you know, because I feel like you guys are here to see this. So this is going to be the best it can be. Having said that, when we come to Europe, when you travel that far to play in front of an audience, you want there to be as many people as possible. So um, I'm projecting that there will be. I'm, I'm hoping I'm right. <laughs> But that, that's one of those things. I hope that we hit, I, I hope, I'm not about selling millions of records. I'm, hel I'm, sell I'm about selling uh, 80. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, it's, it's about reaching more people. If I can reach more people with the drills, that'd be awesome. Anyway, I hope that your dream will come true. Thanks, man. <laughs> Phil, thank you very much for coming here to Slovakia. I hope you will have a great time. Thanks. And I hope to see you in the future one in day March. again. <laughs> for in example. March. You'll be at the drill show. <laughs> and you I go, know. man, that was fucking awesome! Ow! <laughs> it will be. Phil, once again, thank you very much for thank coming you. here. And thank you, our friends, for watching us. Hopefully, see you soon.